Robert Greene and why you should wear a mask. Let's talk about it. For those that don't know, Robert Greene is a renowned author and expert in strategy, in power and human behavior. He has written several best-selling books, including The 48 Laws of Power, The Art of Seduction and Mastery. Greene's work delves into historical and contemporary examples to provide insights into human nature and personal development. Now the book Mastery, I think has some great significance that can help one to become best version of themselves. And the other books are really compelling reads as well. Now in his appearance on the Diary of a CEO podcast, Robert Greene discusses the concept of wearing a mask as a strategy, as a strategy for navigating social interactions and achieving personal goals. Now Green emphasizes the importance of understanding and managing how we present ourselves to others. And he argues that people should wear a mask not to deceive, but to navigate the complexities of social dynamics effectively. So let's go to the black screen and break this down into some phases. Phase one, there is a cultural perspective that wearing a mask is a bad thing. Phase two, Robert Greene is advocating wearing a mask. Phase three, the reason to wear the mask is to navigate social dynamics effectively. And finally, phase four, the purpose of wearing the mask is not to manipulate. So let's break this down further in whiteboard animation. Now, according to Green, human nature includes a tendency, a tendency for individuals to present themselves in the best possible light. This can involve masking insecurities, pardon the pun, and projecting confidence, which can be crucial for gaining influence and building relationships. So by wearing a mask, people can control the narrative around their persona, making them appear more competent, more trustworthy, and more likable. And Robert Greene also highlights the role of deception in human interactions, suggesting that everyone engages in some form of it, so everyone engages in this deception. And he views wearing a mask as a way to adapt one's behavior to different contexts, different contexts and audiences, which can be essential for success in various fields which include business and personal relationships. This adaptability allows individuals to project strength and confidence, which can positively influence how others perceive and interact with them. So I feel at this point, an example is necessary. So John, John wears a mask in work and this helps him function effectively. In the office, he uses small talk and John does not let his emotions override his logical thinking. This is because John knows how to wear a mask. His mask helps him function. So he doesn't use a mask for manipulation, he uses it to help him function. So this is an interesting train of thought. Anyway, Green points out that understanding and reading the masks others wear can provide valuable insights into their true intentions and emotions. So this skill is vital for effective communication and for navigating the often subtle dynamics of power and influence in social settings. Overall, Robert Greene's advocacy for wearing a mask is about strategic self-presentation and adaptability, enabling individuals to better manage their social interactions and achieve their desired outcomes. And that's why I gave the example of John because he's wearing his mask to be effective at work as opposed to manipulate. So this creates a dynamic that masks can be empowering. So let's go back to whiteboard animation. Now in the discussion on the Diary of the CEO podcast, Robert Greene refers to Richard Sennett's book, The Fall of the Public Man. Now Greene highlights the book's exploration of the dichotomy the dichotomy between public and private personas. And he emphasizes the Senate's argument that modern society, yes, modern society has increased to blur the lines between public and private life. And this has led to a decline in the distinct roles people once played in public settings. 
According to him, this shift has caused a loss of formality and decorum in public interactions, making it harder to navigate social and professional landscapes effectively. Now, Robert Greene finds this concept particularly relevant to his own work on power dynamics and social strategy. And he underscores the importance of understanding how to present oneself in different contexts and the value of maintaining a certain level of distance and formality to manage impressions and influences of others effectively. This idea aligns with his broader teachings, his broader teachings on the necessity of wearing a mask in social interactions to control the narrative around one's persona and achieve desired outcomes. So I want to go back to the black screen for this one to explain some ideas. How do we define wearing a mask? This is a good question, because if deception is wrong and we wear a mask to deceive, then surely we are engaging in immoral activity. And if we want to be moral agents, then we need to put down the mask of deception. But the mask of deception is not what Robert Greene is talking about. And I think this is a very important point. And here's another consideration. Life is hard and maybe the mask we wear is for our protection. The protection that is needed in a very cruel world. And perhaps we need to establish the premise of the cruel world being true. And one can say, is that objective or is it subjective? But maybe, just maybe, we need to check the masks that we put on. Because putting on the wrong mask can affect not only our morality, but it can also affect society. Now, if you're enjoying this video, why not check out my video essay playlist? Also, check out the book 48 Laws of Power and Mastery, as they are very, very interesting reads. And if you want to engage with me in the comment section, tell me what you think about wearing masks. So here is another point I would like to make. I think we can safely assume that most people see wearing masks as evil. And despite this, most of us have different masks because this is a part of our social intelligence. Now, social intelligence or effective social intelligence is such an important part of human evolution. And as someone who is neurodivergent, I never understood masks and was never taught these social intelligence dynamics. So perhaps instead of judging people on whether they wear a mask, the better question might be, what type of mask is that person wearing? So in conclusion, I would like to suggest the following phases. Phase one, masks can be effective in work and in personal settings. Phase two, wearing a mask is not necessarily evil. Phase three, if we care about morality, if we care about morality, then we should consider what masks to put on. Phase four, a mask does not necessarily mean engaging in deception. And finally, phase five, the wrong mask can affect individuals and society. Therefore, we should take accountability for the masks that we put on. So I sincerely hope that this video has provided value. Now, if you want to support the channel, you can do the following three things. Number one, you can like the video. Number two, you can subscribe to the channel. And finally, number three, you can share in other digital communities.